talk show. Our guest today is Mayank Shah, Category Head, Parley Group. Welcome to the show, Par- Mayank. Hi. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah. Mayank Parley ha- Group has been a regular advertiser on TV, especially during the IPL. How significant is the role of collective viewing for your brand? I think very important, uh, primarily because uh, if you consider sports, I think, uh, you know, sports typically is consumed on the go uh, uh, when you are alone. You know, uh, it's normally on the go, uh, you'll, will, you'll try and consume it alone. Typically, what we have uh, seen is sports is best enjoyed with friends, with family and uh, you know, collective viewing takes it to a different level. Uh, even with IPL, we have seen typically what happens is, you know, um, people get together either with friends or family and view it. And uh, it increases viewership. It also increases, uh, you know, the enjoyment as in when you're watching it with everybody. So it makes a huge difference, you know, when you're talking about sports like IPL, where uh, collective viewing plays a very important role. Uh, uh, and and it's not just about that. Uh, it's not just about enjoyment. Or it's not just about the fun quotient. It's also about, you know, the increased viewership that you get. So as we all know, IPL is not just restricted to male viewing anymore. Uh, you have, you know, family viewing happening. And uh, that probably, you know, adds to the entire thing. I think what more can an advertiser ask for when he's getting something like, you know, the entire family or entire bunch of friends getting together and watching it. So how do you plan to leverage IPL marketing during you know, key matches like semi-final and final? Uh, well, we have a few plans in terms of, uh, uh, you know, running promotions and stuff like that internally. Um, uh, you need to associate with IPL, you know, if you're uh, running a pro, I'm sure you would be knowing about it. So you cannot leverage the brand name uh, unless you are not part of IPL uh, or directly associated. Our sponsorship happens to be on TV. so. You do not have rights to, uh, you know, use IP as a brand name. But yeah, internally, you know, because we are sponsoring it on uh, uh, TV, we are going to run, you know, a bit of promos where probably we may send, uh, you know, some of our uh, uh, contest winners and stuff like that. Internally, I'm talking about, you know, uh, sales and those kind of um, things and certain business associates. We may send them for watching uh, matches. <laughs> So can you please share a marketing strategy as a as a broadcaster partner? I mean, yeah. So uh, ideally, you know, uh, the primary motivation to advertise on IPL is um, because you get uh, viewership pan India. This is a unique event. I think cricket is, uh, you know, one sport uh, which gives you uh, viewership and uh, more so pan India viewership. So. Uh, we all know there are two things which really excite, uh, you know, Indians. One is uh, cinema and another is cricket. Now, uh, while cinema is, you know, pretty regional, now it's, you know, transcending the borders. You have South, you know, coming to West and North and all. But it's still, you know, pretty regional. However, um, when you talk about sports, it transcends all the boundaries of, you know, language and uh, regions. Um, and it gives you viewership pan India. That's one of the biggest motivations for any advertiser to uh, advertise on a sports property, especially something as big as IPL. So that's one of the primary reasons. And when you talk about strategy, when you're talking about impact, when you are looking at, you know, probably going all out, all India at one go, I think uh, uh, IPL uh, offers you a great platform to advertise on. Mm -hmm. How successful your association has been, you know, so far in terms of ROI with related to IPL only? Uh, I think, you know, it's just started so uh, difficult to say. I think uh, uh, we need to wait and watch because uh, uh, what we've seen, you know, over years is that uh, um, there's good traction that happens in, uh, uh, you know, viewership uh, or you have good viewership uh, in the beginning and towards the end. Uh, however, uh, you know, we're seeing, you know, better viewership, uh, at least in the beginning stage uh, this year compared to last year. Uh, we're waiting and watching on how it pans out throughout the season. So we're hopeful that, you know, it would be uh, good. So uh, uh, ideally, uh, we would expect it to continue, you know, uh, at uh, remaining at this levels. Uh, overall, we would have to watch, uh, uh, you know, whether it uh, surpasses, you know, last year, uh, which it most likely should be. But, uh, you know, probably the all-time highs of 2020, 
uh, if it can you know do that i think that would be uh, great so uh, waiting and watching uh, you know for the outcome uh, of the entire season i think it's a little too pre pre premature to talk about you know roa at this stage uh, are we have ratings just for the first week which have uh, come in waiting for the second week ratings which should come in uh, in next two days mm -hmm. and can you please uh, tell us about your creative and media agency yeah Uh, so our our media agency has been Zedo Zenith uh, OptiMedia uh, through whom this entire deal has been done. And uh, a creative agency is uh, whose creatives are running. We have quite a few creative agencies, but the ones uh, whose creatives are running on this IPL are uh, Rediffusion and uh, Thought Blog. Mm -hmm. Acha, in general, Mayank, uh, what is your media mix? Uh, generally, I think you know TV remains one of the dominant. Um, <clears throat> mediums for advertising uh, given that we are into consumer products um, digital is catching up now uh, so probably a uh, few years back when digital was about uh, just 8 to 10% of the total uh, spends today it's as high as almost about 20 to 25% uh, tv is about 60 65% and then balance goes to other mediums like press or uh, uh even uh, you know uh, radio and outdoors so when you say tv is you know uh, very significant for you so do you uh, do you mean to uh, say connected tv as well yeah connected tv is part of it but connected we we normally you know consider connected to be part of digital uh, mm -hmm. not really part of uh, um, uh, traditional tv uh, households uh secondly i think you know connected if you look at the total universe it's still a small number um uh, although growing but uh, still i think you know it's it's too small a number to really chase especially when you're talking about a client like us uh who's into you know consumer products where typically the ticket size is not really very high uh i think uh, uh the numbers of ctv are not really significant uh you know given the numbers right now they are not significant for us that means you are not advertising on ctv at all not currently not currently i mean you know specifically targeting that separately uh does not make really sense for me at this stage okay uh, acha mayank your marketing strategy during pandemic it was amazing amazing you evolved quickly and i think you won the race as well so i would like you know to to understand how it has evolved now when when the markets are completely open and uh, you know and at the same time there are lot of restrictions you know in terms of budget in terms of inflation and all yeah so uh, i think pandemic we did a great job in terms of you know quickly turning around uh, uh, things uh, we were first to hit back the market i think it was within days uh, within four or five days we were back in the market um we should also thank government for really you know understanding that uh, the sector in which we are and the category in which we are biscuits happen to be you know uh, food for almost uh, everybody in fact i like to put it this way parle ji is not a biscuit it's more of a staple for most indians and uh, the kind of work that was done by brand during pandemic was phenomenal we gave away 3 crore packets you know free of cost to people in need almost everybody walking back to their village to probably you know people who were not able to venture out of their homes were literally surviving on the packs of palaji which we had distributed through government so uh, the kind of goodwill the kind of brand love that we generated during that particular time uh, uh, was phenomenal and tremendous uh, which is even helping us today because you know people know i mean if you walk the talk i mean uh, we always said bharat ka apna biscuit palaji but when you really walk the talk uh, you may say so but when you know nation needs you if you really stand up you rise to the occasion and do that is when people would really appreciate and that's what we saw people really appreciated huge amount of brand love that we saw you know during pandemic and even after that uh, uh what has happened after you know uh, pandemic and as things uh, started uh, you know falling back in place in terms of economy opening up and stuff like that inflation was a big challenge uh it was a challenge last year and i think you know most companies struggle Uh, there was a bit of struggle on our part as well but i think you know we were able to do well uh, relatively given the brand law um, uh, we relatively you know escaped uh, and skated so uh, that was not really uh, you know so much of an issue there although inflation 
did probably uh, you know limit the quantum of growth that we were having in last few years however i think uh, things are looking you know uh, up back again uh, with uh, inflation under control uh, and the uh, rural economy now you know uh, uh, reviving uh, we are seeing demand coming back from rural india we are very hopeful about the coming year 2324 uh, hopefully should be you know really a great year for everybody उटेक्टिंग we may see that happening in next 6 or 7 years um when that study was done uh, ecom contribution was just about less than 1% to the total fmcd today it's upward about 3 and 1/2% 4% kind of thing and only growing so hopefully you know in next 4 uh, 5 years or so we can see rather than 10 years you know we'll see probably 10% uh, contribution of ecom coming to the total fmcd so that was a very very important and uh, significant trend that we saw second thing was uh, about uh, uh you know uh, adoption to you know digital medium so uh, we saw uh, a lot of people you know adapting uh, to digital medium lot of growth in ott and other uh, uh, platforms uh, so consumption of digital media grew uh, registration on ott platforms grew significantly given that people were at home uh, also uh, another important trend on product category or brand front was um, uh, you know people becoming more and more health conscious and you know it sustains i mean even today as we speak uh, generally people prefer to buy things which are you know relatively healthier uh, pandemic has taught us that lesson so most consumers total uh, today uh, are trying and gravitating towards you know products which are uh, better for them healthier for them uh my and now the last question i think parley is going to complete 100 years in uh, 2029 yeah. uh, so i would like to know about your expansion plan and also do you have do you plan to expand your product portfolio as well uh we have been doing it since last few years so if you look at you know from what we started we started as a confectionery company 1929 in 1939 1939 uh, Uh, we got into biscuits the first biscuit that came up was parley ji and prior to that from 1929 to 1939 uh, we were largely selling confectionery orange candy was our brand then and uh, since then you know till almost about uh, year uh, 2000 we were into those two categories uh, confectionery and biscuits post that we got into many other categories we got into bakery where we are present into rusk and cakes uh, we got into snacking in a big way so we have western snacks like uh, chips and bridge category uh, uh, bridge is typically extruded category with uh, indian seasoning uh, we are big there uh, we are into traditional indian namkeens uh, or snacks like you know namkeens and bujiyas and mixtures and other things uh, that's been doing very well for us uh, what and about that we have got very recently into breakfast cereal and staples like atta as well atta we always available in global market we extended it to domestic market as well so now we have parley ji atta also being available so i think um, uh, if you look at very recent in very recent years we've got into quite a few categories which are really big when you talk about atta it's almost about 2 and a half lakh crore category um, uh, way big that way so uh, breakfast cereals is another big category and a growing one although niche uh, we've got into those so i think uh, uh, hands are full with them and at least in next few years we would be looking at establishing ourselves in those categories making a mark for ourselves or you know having a significant share in those categories before we look at getting into other categories yeah thank you so much mayank for taking time out on time pleasure to be your kanchan